If I want to be wealthy, I must learn from wealthy people. Say it with me. If I want to be wealthy, I must learn from wealthy people. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. My name is Matthew Holland, and my goal is to teach you all the tested tips and tricks to actually make you successful and get what you want in life. The first millionaire video got a ton of love, so we're going to do a part two. That being said, you read the title. We're going to start. So I was watching a video by the latest and greatest Sam Ovens. This video was from like five years ago, long time ago, but it is a hidden gem and I really urge you to go watch it. It's about a half hour long. So I did my best to dig out the sweet spots to give it to you here today. So check out the video if you haven't seen it already, but do it after this one. Tip number one, business is about solving problems. That's it. There is no super big secret. It's about solving problems. The bigger the problem you solve, the more money you can charge for the thing. Them's the rules. How is this possible? Well, you solve the problem. That in turn creates value. That in turn you can charge for money. Simple. Here's an example. Do you know why private jets cost so much money? It's because you get to avoid airports. There is no more get there three hours early. There is no more wait in line for the, the baggage check or baggage claim. You just show up to the runway, you get in the private jet, you fly to the other place. The end, speed is king. Imagine if you had, instead of just a car, you had a helicopter that would immediately pick you up and put you somewhere else, no traffic. Very valuable, high cost is what it is. Which then brings us to our second topic. This one hit me kind of personal. You cannot work full time and work in your business. It just will not work. If you are working full time for someone else, then you do not have the time that your business requires to grow it, to work in it, to insert whatever it is that your business needs. You're too busy working in somebody else's. You need to be able to pull out of theirs and put it into yours. Now, granted, the way that he puts it is you should immediately quit your job. And that's understandable. But I wanted to raise this one because this was something that I learned recently. This is my words, not his. Find your freedom number, which is how much money you would like to see before quitting your job. Achieve that freedom number in your business and then dip. It doesn't need to be some extravagant thing. It can, it'll just take longer to build. But I urge you, it's probably in your best interest to be able to bring in enough money to pay your bills and then full send over just don't even bat an eye quit your job go to the new thing you will be able to grow so much faster for it i'm actively working on this right now so if you don't believe me give me some months maybe a year or something i don't know how fast i'm going to grow when i get there i will be sure to let you know now that you have a business and you're already in it topic number three the first thing that you want to do wait what does he say when you first start a business your number one goal is to get cash flow why is this excellent question the same way as if you were out in the wild with absolutely nothing the first thing you want to do is find shelter food and water that is the lifeblood of your business food water shelter is cash flow in the business survival is your first priority you're going to hear me say this a whole lot a business is primary objective is to make money no money no business so really drill that down cash flow is your survival juice <laughs> then when you have a stable cash flow right consistent it's coming in regularly you have enough to do your day-to-day -day things that's when you move to start looking at bigger endeavors you use the cash flow from here to build towards something else to provide more value and make more money why because you can't just go for the big Mount Everest if you don't first have enough food and water to make it there. So you gather your food and water, you build up so it's consistently coming in, and then you prepare for Mount Everest, and then you go for the big thing. That being said, topic number four, how to create cash flow. This is gonna piss a whole lot of people off. The customer is always right. You didn't let me finish. Has the right idea. The customer is always right has the right idea, but it missed a step. What they were trying to say is, customer first businesses will always make money. If a business's primary objective is to make money, and how do you make money, let's go back a step, by providing value, which is solving problems, if you really do that one thing really, really well, they won't leave you. Think of it like streaming services. You probably have like four right now, because they all have different things that you really, really want. I used this before, I'm gonna use it again. Netflix, Hulu, the rest of them, same thing. You wanna watch the shows, you can't get them anywhere else. It's the most convenient and easiest way to get them. It's fast and it's convenient. 
two things. By giving the customer what they want and doing it well and paying attention, you will always be taken care of by the people. And then it's just don't do anything really stupid. And speaking of doing something really stupid, topic number five, lifestyle creep. What is lifestyle creep? All right, let's put it this way. You moved out and you didn't have anything. You just had the apartment, okay? $10 a month. It's an example. Don't fight me in the comments. $10 a month for an apartment. And then you get a job. Then you get paid like $50 a month. You're like, oh shoot, well I have 40 more dollars. I can do whatever I want. So then you get a streaming service and then you get a car. Those two things are gonna cost you the rest of the $40. We're going with this example. Just, all right, so now you're paying $50 a month because you have your car, your streaming service, and your apartment and then you get a pay raise and you get paid a hundred dollars a month oh shoot well now i have 50 extra dollars that's twice i was making before okay well then let's get i don't know a boat a new cell phone and phone plan what else what else what else a gaming computer and now you're paying a hundred dollars a month to pay for all of those great things right bring in a hundred you pay a hundred because that's how you're living your life these days and then you lose your job if you were at the first job and you just stuck to the 50 and you just kept it where it was you wouldn't have to worry because you were bringing in 50 50 50 and then you got an upgrade and then you were bringing 100 100 and all you had was your apartment but now because you paid for all these extra things you no longer can afford the things that you bought that's lifestyle creep and i know what you're thinking it doesn't happen overnight you don't just wake up one day and now you're in the hole it happens over a string of time you get a pay raise you buy a new apartment you get a pay raise, you get a better car. You get a pay raise, you buy another boat or something. Whatever it is, whatever it is, you only realize that happened when you look back. And then you realize, shoot, I messed up. Well, the same thing happens when you're wealthy. This thing that you created to solve a problem and to make money that was originally giving you the lifestyle that you wanted, right? Eventually, if you're not careful, you can't let go of it anymore. If it ever stops doing as well as it was before, your ass is on the line. But if you think about it, this is where the wealthy have mastered the game. How many millionaires or multimillionaires do you know, not personally, that have like a Prius? And you're like, why do they have a Prius? They have all this money. That's why if you never spend more than you're bringing in, you never have to worry about running out of money or what happens if it all goes away one day. Once again, experience and knowing more about the field is what saved these people. And a great way to learn from others' mistakes is by talking to people that have been there already. And how can you do that? Great question from a community of like-minded individuals. Speaking of which, if you are a growth-minded, success-oriented individual and you're looking for others just like you, you should join my school community. I check in there daily. I actually talk to each of the members that are in there and I leave polls for topics that I might make videos on in the future. The link is in the description. Click on that. And with that, we are done today. There is no more challenge that finished last time. My name is Matthew Hall and thank you so, so much for tuning in with me today. What is today? Ah, today's Wednesday. I'll see you on Saturday.